What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Rankable Podcast. And if things sound or look a little different, it's because they are. My name is Aaron Johnson, Senior Digital Marketing Specialist here at iPoll Rank. And over the next few episodes of Rankable, we're going to be changing things up a bit, doing some things a little bit different to try to bring you the most value. So over the next few episodes, we're going to be jumping into some case studies of your favorite brands and businesses to take a look at their marketing campaigns and figure out what they're doing, why it works, and how you can implement it into your business. So without further ado, let's jump in. So anybody who has spent any amount of time on the internet over the last few months has probably had to be bombarded with yellow and green squares on their Twitter feed, Facebook, in the group chat, and probably been a little bit confused as to what that is and why people are sending it to them. Well, by now, I'm pretty confident that we all know that this is Wordle and it's taking the internet by storm over the last about four or five months. So what is Wordle? How did it go viral? And why is it working so well? Let's figure it out. So to start, let's talk about what Wordle is. So Wordle is an online strategy game in which you have six opportunities to solve for a five letter word. You're not really get, given any information about what this five letter word is. And so you have to jump in and use your six guesses to solve for this five letter word. Every time you make a guess, Wordle will give you a yellow square or a green square to signify you have the right letter, but it's in the wrong placement. Or if your square is green, then that means that you've got the right letter in the right placement and so on and so forth until you eventually solve the word. So how did they get it to go viral? So for starters, where did Wordle come from? Wordle was created by a software engineer by the name of Josh Wordle, who created it during, a time, during the pandemic as a means of entertainment for himself and his partner. Um, through that, Wordle kind of spread out throughout his direct ecosystem with family and friends and soon started to take off. So we're here to break down why something so simple, so easy, took off among everybody from teenagers all the way to the <laughs> eldest person that you know on Facebook right now. And I think it, we can kind of trace it back to that word that I used a little bit earlier, simple. It's so simple. And a lot of times in marketing campaigns, we get so caught up in complexity and creativity and how are we going to stand out that we forget how well simplicity actually works. So Wordle's simplicity absolutely plays a huge role in how it was able to easily be consumed and also easily be redistributed and shared to other people. So simplicity plays a huge role in the shareability of a game like Wordle. When you look at Wordle, you've got a game that has no app. The original game has no app. It's very simple. So you don't have to jump onto the app store. You don't have to go to Google Play or anything of that nature. You just type in Wordle on Google and the first link that pops up is going to be the game that you wish to pay. And so you don't have to create these accounts. You don't have to download anything. You just go straight and jump into the game. And so that simplicity of just being able to jump in, in a world where currently we're consistently being bombarded with these apps that we have to create logins and remember passwords for and, and track everything. Um, it's, just, it's just an easier option um, for, for what is a very simple game. And so they made it very simple for you to find it and to play it. And that simplicity also trickles into the shareability of the game. And so when you look at how easy Wordle has made it to share your progress, share your streaks, share your strategy as to how you've solved the game, being able to tweet out those large blocks that we've all been seeing with 
the green and the yellow and being able to decipher how other people were able to solve their word of the day makes it it, it makes us entranced. We're, we're confused, but we're also enamored by what are these yellow and green blocks on our screen? And when we hear Wordle, we say, hmm, that sounds interesting. I want to go give it a try. And I want to share how I solved the puzzle as well. And so when you look at the ease at which you can play the game and the ease at which you can then share in your findings throughout the game with your friends again when you're trying to run a marketing campaign when you're talking to consumers you want to make things as easy as possible for them you don't really want them to have to jump through too many hoops in order to get them to commit to that call to action that you've given them and so wordle does a phenomenal phenomenal job of getting the getting the, the product in their you know in their audience's hands but beyond that they also do a phenomenal job of making it really 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 easy for us to communicate and share these things with our friends and so we get it it's simple it's easy to share but that's kind of the thing right it's such a simple game we've had we've had word strategy games before we've seen other things kind of take off for a moment and go viral why this why this over anything else really and there are other components to why wordle has had so much success when you look at that simplicity and then you take that simplicity and you move it into the simplicity of shareability on social media as well as with friends you start to get an idea of how we as consumers actually work we want things to be easy we want things to not be super super difficult not only to play but we also you know we want to do things for fun and we also want to engage with our friends in comes the streak and so that being built into the game we talk about gamifying certain marketing campaigns and the streak is genius a lot it's not a new it's not a new idea plenty of people have used uh, streaks in their you know within their games to try to encourage people to keep playing um, but the streaks we talk about you know in marketing we have this term of social currency and streaks are exactly that you know I can recall when snapchat first took off and everybody was trying to keep their streaks alive with their friends. And so they were sending these videos and pictures back and forth to their friends and their family to try to keep streaks alive. And so those streaks of like, every time you solve a word, every time you solve that puzzle and you get to keep your streak alive and you get to tell your friends, hey, I've been going strong for the last two weeks. I've solved every single word or puzzle in, a, in, you know, in, in an ecosystem where you know you're seeing these social media posts and you get to you get the bragging rights of like I reign supreme because I've I've I'm always able to solve and I'm always able to solve in three tries or less. It really does something for the ego, of course, um, and it helps us to just keep that very fun, friendly competition with our friends in an extremely simple game, and that is superb, superb marketing but it's also a superb understanding of your audience and your consumers and how they're going to be consuming this game between streaks and simple shareability it just makes it that much easier for you to show off your accomplishments to your friends exchange strategies in terms of how to solve these puzzles quicker should you use more vowels etc and the game spreads through word of mouth on social media and you know other platforms simply by you and your friends communicating about this game every single day when a new word populates. Now, something to note about the simplicity of the shareability and the streaks is that everything within this game is entirely completely text-based. And why is that so interesting? It's interesting because rather than having to shoot out a link like some of the other app games that we mentioned earlier in this episode, 
you don't have to do that. You can literally, when you post, it's literally just a text post that gets posted to any platform that you want to share it on. And that makes it extremely friendly for every single application, whether it be, like I said, like trying to send something in a group chat, sending it out via Twitter, all of those platforms allow you to use text. And some of them get kind of funky with links. And so for Wordle, they don't have to worry about whether or not they're gonna have this funky, weird thing going on anytime somebody shares their game because it's completely text-based. And that was a really smart move for a game that is primarily text-based and all about word strategy. So that's something to look for as well. Keeping in mind, like, when I, when this gets shared out, like how is, how is this gonna be different for every platform? When we're creating content, we think about that. We think about contextualizing things for the platform. Even when we're repurposing, we wanna make sure that we're contextualizing things for Facebook differently than we're doing it for Twitter and differently than we're doing it for TikTok and so on and so forth. And so just having that understanding that no matter where I wanna float this share, you know, these, these shared uh, solutions out to that text is is always for the most part outside of you know maybe a few platforms the text format is going to work and so that was really smart on their part to make sure that that was something that was a, that, that that they were able to incorporate and so that really brings us to something extremely interesting about wordle when we go back to that simplicity Josh really made a decision that he wasn't going to be super in your face with the marketing, asking people to do things. Everything was about just entertainment and having fun and letting things flow. And that's different than a lot of conventional marketing. A lot of con conventional marketing is very in your face. It's very pleased by this. Please go play this. Um, we've all seen the ads while we're playing games on our iPhone or Android, and we've all gotten ads for another game in the middle of playing a game that we're interested in, and they can be very, very frustrating. So for this game in particular, they decided to go the more authentic route of just allowing people to have fun with the game, which of course, anytime anybody is playing a game, that is usually why they're doing it. And so you tap into the psychology of why would somebody want to log on to the internet and play Wordle? And they just want to do something fun. They don't want to be bombarded with a whole lot of content. And so the content is the game itself. The, the game creates the content and the users are generating that content for you and they're spreading the word as opposed to you having to put out a thousand ads. So focusing on your product is a big part of marketing. Focus on your product, focus on what the consumer wants, and the consumer, if it's good, will absolutely tell other people about it because they will want their friends and their family and the people within their circle to be able to have that enjoyment with the product as well. Realistically, as a marketer myself, I can 100% say that if this product was handed to me, I probably would have been, went about things a lot differently. There would have been a lot of paid advertising. There would have been a lot of linking back to the site to try to get people you know, involved in the game. But I think part of the reason why this went viral is because of how authentic it, it was, because of the organic nature of things, and because we actually enjoyed it and were willing to share. That's one of the major, major components as to why this worked so well. And I'm not certain that it would have worked as well had there been an extreme push of just in your face, constant, please go play Wordle, please download this, five to 10 second ads that you can't X out of. I'm pretty sure that they, they pr it probably wouldn't have yielded the results that they had. So this is very unconventional for sure. So now that we've jumped into a lot of the unconventional ways in which Wordle and, and Josh have navigated this to get this project off the ground and eventually get the game in everybody's hands, 
let's go over some of the more conventional ways that Wordle has gone viral. Let's talk SEO. Let's talk content. How has this worked? Let's talk influencers. It gets very interesting. So Google searches for Wordle, I believe first started in around December of 2021 in New Zealand. And over time, we see The Guardian publish an article about Wordle. And shortly after that, we get the major hit, which is the New York Times article that was written about Wordle. I know there are a, a bevy of people who believe that traditional press is a dying platform and that everybody should be going content, 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 social media, social media. But the New York Times article was a huge, huge push for the viral sensation that we know now as Wordle. And just as a side note, at the time of the filming of this episode, Wordle has been purchased by the New York Times for an undisclosed amount. And so that's going to be interesting to look at going forward to see how the game changes, how it progresses, you know, does it regress? Um, going to be very interesting to pay attention to that as well. Many of us have more than likely at this point seen some sort of variation to the Wordle brand, whether it's Wordle for NBA player name. Wordle for some obscure, you know, Wordle for comic book characters. Um, remixes play a huge role in virality as well. Um, one place that we can look no further than that is the music industry. When we look at a young artist who is killing it in the content game, um, and promoting his brand, somebody like Lil Nas X, from the beginning understood how important it was to essentially to use different variations of the product to bring people back to the original. I can't remember how many remixes there were on Lil Nas X's Old Town Road record, but I know there were a bunch and a bunch of them went number one on the billboard or they charted and that helped with the streams for the original record in boosting those streams. And so for Wordle, you would think that the knockoffs are a problem. You would think that maybe uh, Josh, the creator, would be frustrated by this or that um, it would rub him the wrong way. But the the remixes every time somebody remixes wordle a portion or percentage of the people who play that remix version are going to go back and they're going to say well what is wordle where did this come from and they're going to they're going to do a google search and the first thing that's going to pop up is going to be the original um and so that helps every time that you see there there's now i believe there's a wordle in the app store that was not created by josh and somebody else is currently getting downloads and probably getting ad revenue and making money off of it. But that always is going to, you know, in some ways is going to actually help push you through controversy of the brand, through people who have brand loyalty to your, your original version of Wordle are going to say, that's the fake. You've got, you've got to, you've got to delete that from your phone. You've got to hop onto the real Wordle. Um, and so those remixes, even though they may not understand it because they're looking for a quick opportunity to get some quick revenue for themselves, are actually helping to grow the brand of Wordle. And ultimately, that is good for business for the original creators of Wordle and now for the New York Times. So when we look at remixes and how they apply to our businesses, we always want to be looking at what opportunities there are for people who are potentially making similar content to us. Maybe they have similar businesses. Maybe they do something, something 
the same as us, but we do something a little bit different. There are ways to use it to your advantage, even if you feel like somebody is maybe siphoning some of your users or some of your audience base. Um, collaboration is a is is a great one. Piggybacking off of some of their some of their content when you see content being put out there that you believe is similar to yours. Always find a way to spin it and bring it back to your service or your product. And that's something that Wordle has done a really good job of and very similar to, you know, Little Nas X, who I referenced earlier. They've been able to use some of that controversy to build up the brand loyalty of some of the people who have been playing Wordle now for the last couple of months. And a lot of those people will go on, go to bat for you. They'll go on the attack for you. They'll tell people, this is not the original. Go, go online and search for Wordle on Google. You'll be able to play the original game that was made by the original creators. Um, and that is what creating a great product that brings all of us together has the ability to do. It has the ability to spread through just very, very authentic word of mouth but you also will have a loyal, loyal audience that will go to bat for you when they see some of those remixes pop up with people trying to siphon your user base and essentially just steal a little bit of traffic from you. Um, so always be mindful of that. Sometimes it can get very, very frustrating when you see others maybe taking some content ideas from you or maybe they you know, try, try to put out an ad that's very similar to yours, but you have to find ways to flip it and bring it back to your product and your service. So where is, where is Wordle heading um, in the future? I honestly thought that the fad would have passed by now, but when I log on to Twitter, I still can't log on without seeing yellow and green boxes every morning. And so, I, I do believe that it will pass within a couple of months. We've, we've seen this before with mobile games that have this white heat moment of everybody being engaged and playing them, whether it's Temple Run or, or Fruit Ninja or uh, you know any, any of the other games that have gotten super popular um, during our time and kind of phased out or moved on to um, I know Fruit Ninja and Temple Run have moved on to like arcade style games, um, which is awesome. But I do believe that Wordle, you know, there is an expiration date on how long this, this you know, its popularity is going to last. I think what will happen is we're going to continue to see a lot of Wordle remakes and remixes very similar to those other games that I mentioned. There are a bunch of spin-offs to those games. Um, but what's important, I think, is just that the, these games, they do have a life cycle. They do have an attention span um, that which, you know, when, when the audience um, is, consu is consuming and they're playing these games, um, they don't last forever. Whether it's a mobile game or whether it's uh, Call of Duty or NBA 2K or, or Fortnite, which had a, an extreme white heat moment. And then it starts to, you know, everything starts to settle in um, and they, they keep their extremely loyal fan base and other people who were just there to kind of be a part of the moment move on. But there are so many other products that with this level of uh, attention to detail and understanding of their audience and who's buying from them would be able to create long standing relationships with their buyers and keep business flowing for years to come. So there's a lot you can learn from Wordle. There's a lot that you can learn uh, from just this kind of case study in general. But if I had to kind of narrow it down and take away uh, some very simplistic, uh, just base, what are the huge takeaways from this? 
I'd say uh, try to get try tr try to simplify your marketing strategy. Um, and simplifying requires you to have a extremely extremely honed in understanding of your audience because then you can simplify it specifically for the people who are most likely to be buying from you so less is definitely more it's it's an it's kind of you know I, obviously that's the old saying but particularly with this marketing strategy i think that that was a great approach because it's a simple game it doesn't require much the other takeaway that I have is try, trying to find ways to gamify what you do can be very interesting depending on the product or service that you might offer. Um, the shareability of Wordle is phenomenal and you would definitely want to find ways that maybe you can learn from that and figure out ways that you can make your content about, you know, your content that's centered around your business more shareable, find ways to add the most value, valuable info that you can and the most value within your content to make it more share shareable. We all get extremely frustrated when we post a piece of content that we've worked really really hard on or we're posting about a product that we've worked really really hard on and we're not getting the engagement that we'd like and nobody is really sharing it um, and that can be extremely frustrating at times but you again have to tap into the user and the audience that you're speaking to and ask yourself what would i want to share if i saw it online within my industry um, and that'll give you a better idea as to what the people who are consuming your content are more likely to you know click the share button or copy the link and send it to their friends you really 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 want to you know make sure that you're putting out i guess putting your best foot forward and making sure that your content is as shareable as possible and you do that by increasing the value that you're providing within that content. So that's definitely something to look for. And finally, I guess that my last takeaway would be if you are unsure of what your audience in totality wants and what what they'd be looking for that is valuable, it definitely helps to find influencers or influential platforms that understand your user maybe a little bit better than even you do and reach out to them for help because the New York Times article helped Wordle a ton. Some of the tweets that have come from larger influencers on Twitter, I think uh, one of the, I think Jimmy Fallon, the late night host, actually tweeted out um, a Wordle link a couple of weeks back and that kind of like also helped to snowball the marketing campaign for Wordle and, and helped with its virality. Try to find people that understand your users just as well, or if not a little bit better than yours, that have some influence in the space and see if you can get them to work with you on your content to yield better results. So those are the key takeaways that I would take away from what Wordle has done. Understanding your user base, finding influencers that also understand your user base, and keep it simple. So that's it. Those are my key takeaways. That is the end of this week's Rankable. And next week, we've got some more great content coming up. So be sure to hit that like button, share this with your friends, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on TikTok, and I'll see you next time on the next Rankable. Uh -huh.